everybody, this is Geek Machine here, and I am with some really fun people here for a very fun review of The Adventure Begins. And starting up, we have DM Man from Sorter Island Forums. Hey, folks. Hey. And then we have Evan, also from Sorter Island Forums, better known as Silly Evan. Hi, guys. How's it going? Then we have Metamorphical. Hi, guys. And then Henry the Green. It's a pleasure to be here. Lady T. Pikachu. Oh god, what am I doing here? I just got kidnapped. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we have yours truly, me, Geeb Machine. And then finally, Cerno. Hello. Alrighty, so we just finished watching The Adventure Begins, the latest Thomas and Friends special to commemorate uh, the 70th anniversary. And... We are going to be talking about um, about the special itself. This will be kind of our little review of it. So, first up, is the first topic is animation. This is the animation of the special. And first up is DM Man. DM Man, what was your thoughts on the animation? Wow. Um, wow, as in really great animation. There was texture on the faces. Um, and everything had all this weight and, um, just heaviness and all the shot. Oh my God, the shots. Oh my God. Um, it just, it looked right. Like this was the real evolution that we've been waiting over 15 years for. And they, they nailed it. They nailed it visually and in all the other ways, but we're going to talk about the visual now. And I think that's, that's it for me. Okay. That, that's, I, that's really good. Yeah. Um, Evan, what are your thoughts on the animation? Well, coming from a guy who grew up mainly on the TV series, I remember Soda Island Forum started as Series 7 was coming out. So I was around when they switched from models to CGI, and I was one of the big naysayers, I'll admit it. Like, I wasn't all that thrilled about it. But this, this right here is getting my hopes back, you know? This the whole presentation, the whole package, the the direction of the camera angles, the shots, the movement, the quality of the models, it's really, really pleasing to the eye. The aesthetic is wonderful. There's a lot of ambiance now. They've populated their world with background characters and rolling stock and birds and trees and wind. It's very, very nice, and I, I look forward to seeing more of this. Yeah, and is, is that it for you? Yep, I'm good. Alrighty, next up is Metamorphical. What is your thoughts on the animation? It is fantastic. I cannot believe that there's animation this good on Thomas and Friends. I mean, just look at it. The textures, the rain, the water. Water is tr is said to be one of the hardest things to animate. Um, the cat side view, the gradients on the side rods and all that, it's just fantastic. Then with, there's the facial expressions that do a wonderful job conveying uh, the emotions of the scenes. I mean, the animation um, really adds to the, the ambiance and everything. It makes Sodor feel alive. It made that crash at the end really spectacular. It's just amazing. And is that is that it for you? Yes. All righty. That's actually good. Okay, and now, Henry the Green, what is your thoughts on the animation? Well, I'll start by just piggybacking on what Metamorphical said specifically about the faces. Um, I mean, to me, when this when the changeover first started, um, you know, it was interesting how they had to rely so much on the on the storyteller, but now seeing the little facial expressions and ticks that the the animation is capable of and the emotions that it convey without saying anything it's you know it's why i've thought to myself they barely even need a storyteller anymore because the animation is that good mm -hmm. um you know the, the mm -hmm. you know blow you know james blowing away the smoke from his brake blocks you know the, the that nervous grin that thomas gives when he's the only engine available um, it all, it, it's, it's, it's the ultimate, well, maybe not the ultimate, but it's, it's the best that it can possibly be right now, I think. 
Yeah. And that, that, that's I, all I have to say. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with that as well. Um, next up is Lady T. Pikachu. What is your thoughts on the animation? Well, I don't really have a lot to add to it, except that I it's really it really has changed a lot since like the old days, like the old modeled series. It's something it adds a lot. Yeah, like like others have uh, like others have said, uh, having the facial expressions available has really added a lot, and that's really um, there's a lot of like 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 uh, feathers have said um, there's a lot of weight to it, and there's a lot of impressive things they can do with it, and a lot of good textures. Eh, that's really all I have to say. I don't really, I'm not really. Eh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I for me, yeah, I kind of echo everybody else here but for me i think what i really like most about the animation is is the the attention to detail and the facials though i mean if you look closely you can even see the the um uh the dust that's on the engines and all the scratch marks and all the wear and such that that is something major right there that i like that and the the facials are also one of my favorites, because I mean, like I, Bill and Ben in particular, when they do their facials, the, that that got me laughing a lot. I mean, that's another thing about the old series as well, because like, uh, who somebody just said that it was all dependent on the storyteller. Who said that? Was it uh, that was me, David? Yeah, they were all dependent on the storyteller giving that emotion but now the scenes just play out with the characters just giving that expression as their reaction and it's it's perfect i like that i really like how that plays out so yeah that those are my favorite parts about the animation and then oh one more is the lighting the lighting itself it's um if you look closely at the engine's boilers when you see the light reflecting off of it and as somebody else stated it, it actually shows that they look like they're made of metal so yeah that that's my thoughts on the animation it's it's really gotten better ever since season 12 all right now last up is shay or cerno cerno what is your what do you think about the animation i'm so nervous right now uh, uh pretty much what everyone else has said but i would like to add all yeah the attention to detail like the grass stains on james after the crash yeah the water in the top view of the water towers yeah and also the freight and the freight cars actually look like they're holding back or pushing forward yeah uh -huh. <laughs> yeah it's good of course, we, we saw that in King of the Railway, even. Mm-hmm. But the, they, they really exaggerated it on this one in particular, didn't they? Yeah, but I think it suits it. Mm-hmm. And anything else? Um... Or is that... that it for you? Well, if the opening sequence counts... Yeah. Yeah, the opening sequence is beautiful. Yeah, it's almost dreamlike. You yeah, say. it has some nice. The the clouds are really nice. I like it. Yeah. And I like it's a very good call back. back to that to the second opening of the series when they transferred over to engine roll call. It brings that swooping down to see the whole of the island going from the harbors to the hills and then finally to the tunnel where oh surprise it's not Thomas it's Gordon. And then we get into our story. Yeah, but instead of starting at Brendam, it starts at Norrenby. Yeah. And the opening uh -huh. camera is even at the right angle of the island. Like we get to see the uh, the mouth of whatever river of whatever river is at Norrenby, and just they really paid attention to the map. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So is that is that it for you, Shay? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Alrighty. So now that the our thoughts on the animation are out of the way, our next topic is actors. What does everybody think about uh, the new faces that they brought on and how the actors portrayed the characters? 
So first up, as usual, it's DM Man. DM Man, what is your thoughts on the actors? Well, um, I mainly watched the UK series um, over the past couple of years. Um, so then when I saw the trailer, first saw the uh, teaser trailer on iTunes, and yeah, I love the writing, my God, but the voices I was not very impressed with, um, Edward and Gordon. Um, and they didn't really grow much on me, even though uh, Edward did a little bit, and Gordon does get probably the best line of the whole special. Um, I can say it now, or I can wait till later. However, you can say it now. You can all right. say it now. Um, I'm glad you came to our railway, Thomas. You always give us something to laugh about. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry for the show offing, but um, what was I going to say? But, see, my, my main pr- with Gordon and Edward, the problem with them was they don't sound like a... They, they sound like someone trying to be a pompous guy and someone trying to be an old guy, not a pompous guy and an old guy. Um, yes. Um, I don't know what that is. Um, but, however, Thomas was freaking awesome. I, I, he's, he's the best. He's, he's really great. He did such an amazing job. And the guy who does James, he's amazing. Everyone, even Woody Allen Henry. Like, <laughs> yes, I was going to mention that. It's like they watched The Yard, and, and he decided to base his voice on The Yard. No. Um, I'm never going to get that out of my head now. Yes. <laughs> never. <laughs> it, is, it is accepted headcanon. You've you got about <laughs> 10 seconds, DM man. Uh, yeah. Overall, very impressed with the actors, despite minor gripes. <laughs> Alrighty, so next up is Evan. Evan, what are your thoughts on the actors? Well, I come off with a little bit of a different perspective. I haven't really seen the series. I'm going to freely admit this. haven't really seen the series for the past seven seasons. So I haven't really seen the characters get their individual voices. So I'm still coming off of, God help me, Alec Baldwin. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) James' voice is really quite something. James James has really developed into a character. Um, But anyway, uh, but I've seen a couple of episodes from the newer series when someone says, oh, hey, watch Duck and the Slip Coaches or, you know, Toby and the Signals or whatever they call it. So I watched some of that. And, of course, they were in the U.K. But coming to me from that huge gap and other people that have been like, oh, let me see what Thomas is doing now. It's really quite nice. I think Thomas's voice suits him. The actor is doing a brilliant job. The directions he's given is a little shaky at some point. I think he's trying a little too hard. But it really fits his character. James is very nice as this new engine that comes in, is trying to prove himself even though he's kind of, you know, he's got wooden brakes, so that's a detriment. But he, he, he does show that he's proving himself. The actor's doing a good job with that. Gordon is Gordon, to paraphrase a YouTube poop. Um, Henry <laughs> is... Henry is my only big gripe. I'll get to him later when we get to the the dislikes section. But Henry is a special case. Edward, though, is a little bit of a middle ground. I think they could have done a bit more with uh, how they presented him. The actor, I think, was either unsure of where Edward was standing as a character. But I I think they could have improved on that a bit. But overall, I was very happy. Sir Topham Hat being perhaps my favorite with um, Thomas being a close second. Agreed. All right, so is that it for you, Dave? Uh, that, uh, yep, uh, I'm Evan? good. Right. All right, so next up is Metamorphical. What is your thoughts on the actors? Well, I have to agree a little bit with Evan. Um, I think that Edward sounds boring or bored, and that's one of the drawbacks. That's one of the uh, little nitpicks I have with the voice cast. Maybe that contributed to the way my niece felt when I watched it with her. But um, for the most part, I think the voice acting is is not bad. It's not great, but not bad. Now, I uh, started watching again with Series 17. And like uh, the others, I've seen mainly the UK version, so I may not be as familiar with these voices. Um I really don't have a problem with Gordon, the way Gordon sounds. I think he's fine. But I think that James and Thomas really steal the show. I mean, I can go, when we get to the character section, I'll go on for a day and a half about what I think, 
how well they did with James and Thomas. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I think the voice cast is, is fine. Um, I do think there's some things they could do better. They could sound a little less bored, a little, um, have a little bit more flair and a little bit more emotion, especially since they got that great animation behind them. And, and the voice cast may be holding it, holding them back a little bit from, uh, at least on the American version, from managing to portray all the emotion that the animation is capable of delivering. But the voice cast is fine, and, and it gets the job done. Right. So, I, I, that... I hate to step in on that, uh -huh. but it just uh, to go off of what you were saying with the, you know, leading up to the animation, I think that's actually the animator's fault. They went above and beyond, because in most cases, the actors are recorded before the animations are even finished. So a lot of times the whole facial movement and stuff like that, they might see, you know, some animatics to go along with it, but they're probably just going in there blind and they're animating to what the voices are. So I think the animators actually upstage the actors <laughs> in some of the scenes. Hmm. Fair point. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Anyway, is that is that your thoughts, Metamorphical? Yes. All righty. Next up, Henry the Green. What is your thoughts on the an on the actors? Well, I'll just I'll just quickly say, uh, I don't I don't hate Alec Baldwin as much as others seem to, but I'll I'll just put that out there. Um, I liked him in uh, series five and not six. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 at least his his Jack Nicholson Gordon. You have to at least say that was unique. Um, but anyway, uh, back to the topic at hand. Um, I've seen a mix of the UK and the US voice casts um, as I've caught up with the series um and i said earlier i mean i i do think they need to merge the two just for logistical purposes um but uh I, you know i really can't say i have any complaints i mean um i like thomas's new voice i mean i i was just getting used to sherman's voice as thomas uh michael sherman's uh voice it's as, it's, as it's martin martin it's martin Sorry. sherman Martin Sherman's voice as Thomas. I was just getting used to that, but this one I think, you know, has the capacity to be even better. Um, and as far as the other voices, like like Gordon and Edward and Henry, it's to me it's it's a case of, you know, no very few actors can rise above, you know, material if the material is not right. I mean, if they're just saying catchphrases, you know, like "Express coming through," there's only so many spins you can put on that. So. Mm -hmm. You know, if I, I think the voice actor is fine, it's just continuing to keep the story and the dialogue where it needs to be. So right. Uh, th those those are my thoughts. Every, everybody's doing a, doing a good job. They just need to make sure the material's there. Right. And that's that's it for you, um, Henry. Yes. All yeah, right. I think so. All righty. Next up, Lady T. Pikachu. What is your thoughts on the actors? Um, I'm one of those people who ever since the switch to CGI and ever since I started watching the series again, I've been watching the UK and US versions sort of interchangeably, though I have been watching the UK versions more, so I always thought that those were better. So hear hearing them here is a little different for me, but I think that uh, most of them did a pretty good job, barring Edwards, who I like. I like his voice more than I like the UK, but his actor doesn't do as much of a good job as the UK one. So, I wish he would just be as good as that one. But Thomas and James do a really good job. Their actors are outstanding, I think. I think they're really good. And I like, and I really like the change for Thomas's a lot, and James. But for Thomas, when I first heard his new voice, I was like, oh, dear God, what is this creature you've just unleashed? But <laughs> uh, it, I'm, it's really growing on me. He does a really good job, and he really like conveys like Thomas's personality. He does he does an excellent job. But as other people have said, there's only so much you can do with like uh, old catchphrases and all that. But yeah, they do a really good job with what they've been given. So <laughs> that's all I got. All right. Okay. Now it's my turn. I'm gonna kind of echo uh, Lady to Pikachu on uh, a bit on the. Thomas a bit. So yeah, when I first heard Thomas, I was like, "Oh my gosh, what the heck? That 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 doesn't sound like Thomas." It was it was like when everybody first saw the animation trailer for uh King of the Railway, it was met with very frosty uh 
review, but then as the years wore on, it it got better. And then after seeing Thomas Moore in this special, the the voice actually listening to it and the way uh the actor who was doing him, which I I believe is Joseph May, um, it it in my opinion actually sounds a heck of a lot better than. Martin Sherman's. Yes. He, he definitely is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like, um, somebody else here just said that there are some moments that where he sounded a bit, uh, a little too, uh, contrived or a little too forced or something. Um, I, I would have to agree with that, but on the whole, he was, I really, really liked it. And, but the big surprise for me was seeing James getting a new voice. I was not expecting that. And, that that actually for me seems to be more better suited than a uh, Carrie Shales James voice. Say, so, well, it was better than Alec Baldwin's voice. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll and, never gonna let that, oh, that no. down. Yeah, and just so you, I'm gonna throw this out there for our YouTube audience. Um, <laughs> um, to me, when I first heard, I'm like, oh my gosh, it sounds like Fred from Scooby Doo, but, but uh. There, there is some similarities, but it's 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 different on the whole. But I, I really like it. So yeah, again, those 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 two really did stand out to me in this special. They stand out really well. And that's that's my thoughts on it. And up next is Cerno. What is your thoughts on the actors? Um. Well, I always prefer the UK voice actors, so. I'm biased against the American ones, but I do think they've done a better job here than they ever have before. Mm-hmm. This is, yeah, this is the best performance I've ever heard them give. Yeah. yeah I will. I agree. I, I, I'll third, third that, uh, I'll fourth that, probably. <laughs> so, um, any, anything else you'd like to add, uh, Cerno? <laughs> yes, I am glad that, that I am glad mm-hmm. that They keep bringing more and more UK voice actors to the US version. Like, they did that first with Mavis, and now they've done it with the Fat Controller. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Because, in my opinion, all the UK voices are better than the US ones. Except for Victor, his US voice is better, but they use that version for the UK one now as well, so... Yeah. I think they've just been a bit too scared because they're just like, oh no, American voices, uh, you know, like the American audience won't won't understand the British voices. Yeah, but as no, we we grew up on Ringo Starr. I think I think we're good. Oh sure, we did. What about the 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 kids who grew up with Alec Baldwin? How will they manage? (laughs) How will they ever manage? I grew up with him too. Stereotypical gay selling James. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, but that's what they had. You listen to it, it's like, really? That That's the voice you guys are going with? I mean, I guess, but... I actually like yeah, that's, that's the voice. Yeah, that's the voice I grew up with, and it's like, hmm, we've changed a lot now. <laughs> the voice I grew up with was uh, George Carlin's. Yeah, I grew Carlin's up with Carlin. James. Great, great Carlin. Yeah. I grew up with all three. A lot. I, uh, In my opinion... Uh, sorry? Sorry, it was some... I just grew up with a lot of them. I this is still my turn. Like Ringo Starr, George Carlin, and Alec Baldwin. Same here. Uh, is this still my Sorry, turn sir. or what? Uh, did you did you have anything more you wanted to add? Sorry. Yes, and now I can't remember what it is. Thanks, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh no. Sorry, man. We're we're we're, we're breaking protocol here. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh. <laughs> okay, so. Good night, well, folks. Okay, um, I'm really sorry about that, sir. Now, really sorry about that. Um. Anyway, if you th- now, if you think of it, let us know. We'll we'll come. We'll we'll, we'll let you speak. We'll your fix point. it in post. Don't worry. Alrighty. So, um, our next topic it is story. How, how do you think they did the story? How did they, Well, do you think they wrote it? How well do you think it flowed? How it was presented and such. And as usual, we're starting off with DM Man. What is your thoughts on the story? It was bloody brilliant, Wiggles. Um, <laughs> it was. I couldn't imagine them doing it any better. Honestly, it was like, it, it was the perfect mix of the old and the new. Um, you know, if it was just retelling the first two books of the Railway series, I mean, it would have been awesome, like, to see it in CGI, but they went above and beyond by, like, mixing things up, 
changing around the order, adding whole new stuff, and fixing things you wouldn't think would need to be fixed. And it all fits together so well. So well. Uh, I, I, I said it before, I say it again. This is the evolution we've been waiting for for years and years and years. What um, old Will would have thought of it, I don't know. He probably would have found things to complain about, but... Yes! The... Yes! Just... Ergerberger joy. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't be more coherent. Hashtag Ergerberger. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Start that trending, folks. We're counting on you. <laughs> Erger, Erger. Okay. Uh, Don't forget a, hashtag. Edward is Somebody boring. write that down right now. Somebody write that down. Write that down so we don't forget it. <laughs> Erger, Erger. All right. So is that is that it for you, uh, DM man? That's it for me. Yep. All righty. Next up is Evan. What is your thoughts on the story? Oh, boy, where to begin? Um, first off, let me just say this. This story was good enough to bring me back to the community after so long. Like, I'm one of those guys that was just like, all right, that's it. Series is done. Jump the shark. No more. I'm done. And I was like that for, you know, seven or eight seasons. And when I heard this come out, uh, or heard that this was coming out, I said, all right, I'll give it a try. And this story won me over. Now, you can get into nitpicks and say, all right, well, it's not exactly the books or it's not exactly series one. I went back and read the books after watching this. I opened up my books, read them through, paid, you know, cover to cover. I went back and I watched the four or five episodes that this was based on in series one. The story is an adaptation and it's a great adaptation. It's from a different perspective. It's a slice of life. It's telling it as naturally as they can from one point to the end where Thomas gets his reward and is finally a really useful engine. And I love that. I did that myself in the Extended Railway series with the, th uh, the Thin Clergyman's Railway. And there wasn't as much of an uproar about that because <laughs> that was a fan fiction. But I, I don't understand a lot of people hating it because it's not, you know, directly verbatim. I think it has a lot of potential. I think there were a lot of missed opportunities with the story. I think they could have tweaked a few scenes. Uh, the setup with Glenn at the end could have been handled a little bit differently. I think they could have fleshed that out. And But overall, the story that they told was very endearing and very satisfying. I will agree with that. Yeah. Is that it for you today? Yep. Is that All righty. Up next is Metamorphical. What is your thoughts on the story? The story was great. Now, the strength of the story does trace back to this source material, but it's also the strength of the writers that allowed it to be what it was, where they brilliantly intertwined everything to create a great narrative. And the result is just something that feels actually innovative, which is something that's pretty unique for something that's an adapt an adaption, especially something that's kind of a second adaption, since, you know, we have seen this stuff before. We know where point A to point B is. Um, so it, it's really compelling. It's fun to watch. It's just amazing what, what they accomplish. I mean, you know, I think that the, the, the current team is just brilliant. Um, I... Uh, I just can't say enough good things about what goes on and the way the characters are handled, the way everything meshes together. It's just uh, so much fun to watch. I think that's that about it? it for me. All righty. So up next is Henry the Green. What is your thoughts on the story? Okay. Well, to start off with, I, I was a little bit like Evan, where I had fallen behind in watching the series uh the last thing i had seen was um uh, blue mountain mystery and maybe a handful of series 17 um but hearing that this was coming out it spurred me i did a i, I binged watched series 17 and 18 uh to, to get fully caught up with everything and tale of the brave and king of the railway and i was just floored by what i was seeing and so i knew this was going to be something really special and something that we had been waiting for for a long time. When I saw Blue Mountain Mystery in the movie theater, my jaw dropped when I saw them do the flashbacks to the classic stories, and I thought, my goodness, how much money would I pay to see those stories redone in this new medium, and the things they could do that the models never could. And the fact that they 
not only done it, but done it so well because the the way everything flows. I mean, that's the one thing you can say may, that maybe maybe a knock against the the Reverend Audrey's writing was all the stories were written as just these little bite-sized chunks. So to have it progress naturally is really a testament to the writer's ability, uh, Mr. Mr. Brenner and his team. Um, so, I mean, I, I think one of the gags during the, during the nadir of the series was, you know, the Audrey, that Audrey is spinning in his grave. I think I could safely say he's stopped now. He doesn't have to spin in his grave anymore. <laughs> uh-huh. so, uh, Darn, yeah. I'm going to have to get a new generator. <laughs> London would have to get a new generator. That's it for me. Alrighty. So, up next, Lady T. Pikachu, what is your thoughts on the story? I think they did a really good job retelling the story. It's a cute little story, and they did a good job mashing all these all these stories that we've come to know and love together into one big story of how Thomas got and how he got his reward. Um, there's, there's some, I even like, um, parts where there are some people, where people have gripes about, like, uh, the part with Henry. I actually, I'm alright with that. I'm alright with him and his fear of, of, apparent fear of the rain. I am not, I don't care about that. I think he could come from vain and fear of more punishment, I suppose, but I really like that. It's a cute little story. I had a really fun time watching it, and they did a really, really good job. Even... Like some have said, they've done some things actually even better than the original, the series one. As good as they are, and I still like watching them. This did do some things better, you have to admit. I think that's uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's all for me. That's all for you? All right, so, yeah, for me, when I first heard about this, this it was it was for the, the book that was coming out, and I'm like... Okay, what are they gonna do here? I was I was a little skeptical at first, but then, um, after hearing a little bit here and there, I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. But then actually seeing the trailer itself and these little nods, and then act in the little clips, and then finally seeing it for myself, I'm like, oh my gosh! I thought I would never see this. Them actually sticking to the works of the Reverend W. Audrey, plus taking something from his other writings, the Glenn the Coffee Pot, for instance. That was the first time we got to hear and see a little bit of Glenn. That that was that was very surprising to me. Um and seeing James in his black livery, that was also a really nice nod. But the story itself, I I really liked how they meshed it all together, like you all have been saying. That they, they flowed really well. I really liked it. It was, <laughs> it was, it was good. I, I. That's pretty much all I can say about it. I and I, I actually one more thing is I think this would be, for those who are just starting to like Thomas. I think this special would be a great way for those who don't have the books. A great way to reintroduce the series to children. That, that that's what I that's what I kind of think on there. It was done really well. Agreed. Really like Agreed. It. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and that's my thought on it. And now, Cerno, what is your thoughts on the story? Um. Well, I could go on and on about coffee pots, but I'll save that for characters. <laughs> Yeah, I thought they did a really good job meshing all this. I was not expecting so many things from the first book to be adapted. I thought it would be pretty much just the second one, but... Not only did they... There were even some things... In here that were... Never... That were not in the original episode adaptations. Mm Mm-hmm. But, uh, and then they even take stuff from the island of Sodor, its people, history, and railways. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Everyone else pretty much covered my thoughts. <laughs> now you know why uh, I went last. Why I chose last. While you're last? 
Yeah, so I don't have to... So things are a little bit easier for me. I don't have to be so stressed out. Because other people cover... Uh, well, anyway, but at least we're, we're all starting to get our own little original thoughts out there as well. We're, we're starting to get out there, even though it may be echoing to some, but it's, uh, if, if you, you get what I, I mean, right? Guys? Yes. Right. Alrighty, so our next topic, it, it is the music. The, the, this is your thought on how the music was done, how... Well, do you think they did it and everything? And so music Scott, and songs? Um, I guess we could do that, music and song. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so first up, DN Man, what is your thought on music and songs? I brought that up, even though I'm negative on songs just generally. They're actually what kicked that... They're what ended my interest in Thomas back in Series 4, actually. But going back to the original series and... Oh my gosh, you hear the music, and just uh, emotional outbursts the whole time. Um, oh my god, it's the Top of Matt's theme. Oh my god, it's Thomas's old theme. Oh my god, Edward's theme. Oh my god, Henry's theme in there, and Gordon's theme. Yay! Um, okay, I got that squee out there. Um, I'll try to keep that contained. I think um, I found my new generator. I think that's how we <laughs> There we go. That's it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, um, it's like, and then the songs come. It's like, oh no! But then again, I prefer. Was it Robert Hawthorne who uh, Hearthstone? What's his name? Same guy, man. He he's the one who did the music for this as well. Yeah, uh, he did a great job with the music, and he's a better singer than the choir kids. But let's be honest; it all belongs to um, the the music. This the bring. Every, all, everything old is new and is wonderful again. And uh, if I could just go back to characters for a second, Annie and Clarabelle, damn, they just nailed it. They just did such a great job. Um, and yeah, that, that's it to me. Yeah, I, I thought it was uh, on the subject of uh, the, the harsh thorn, uh, thorn or whatever it is. I thought that it's father and son team, isn't it? I think yeah. it was, but one Robert. of them left. And then the other is just working on it. I'm not entirely sure about that. I could be one, wrong. One did the music. The other did the singing. I can't remember which one it was, though. Not sure. Hmm. I anyway. think it was Robert who did the, the music. That one I think I'm pretty confident on. Yeah. And I think Peter was the one who probably sang. It was probably him. I don't know. But anyway, it was a, it was a father. I just wanted to get that out there. Um, next up. Evan, what is your thoughts on the music and songs? I have a lot of thoughts on this. Uh, as a musician myself, I've been playing a musical instrument for over 15 years. I've been singing for almost all of my life. Um, I even compose, uh, you know, just as a hobby. Uh, so I really appreciate all the efforts that... Um, they've put into the music for this special. I think it even go, it goes above and beyond what's in the TV show proper right now. Um, I just want to make it clear that the I love the songs. I absolutely love them when uh, Junior uh, and Michael started doing them back in the original series. I, I absolutely adored them. Uh, but here, I will say that the melodic, you know, variation, the, the new... Uh, you know, breath of life they've given into the songs is welcome and it's refreshing, uh, but the singing was a little subpar. Uh, come on, guys, you could have done one more take, please. Auto tune something. Anyway, so the bringing back the old themes was an excellent, smart choice. It was it hit everything. Everything was encapsulated in those theme songs. You knew instantly where you were. It felt like a railway. It felt classic and timeless. And it was great fun. And I'm so happy they brought it back. People will nitpick saying, oh, well, they used Edward's theme here. Or uh, what about this? Uh, no, no, no. It doesn't matter. They brought it back, and it was fantastic. And it's great to finally hear them in these orchestral sort of scores. The 80s MIDI synth will always have a special place in my heart, but I love this. Um, if there's one thing I want to say wrapping up on the music, it's that um, I think they could have placed a really useful engine at the end of the movie, which they did, 
but they foreshadowed it rather abruptly at the very beginning where Thomas is just getting, you know, starting off uh, a very green, both visually and metaphorically, in uh, working on Sodor. And I think they could have saved that for the ending and used a different, uh, maybe just his original theme uh, right there for uh, his working montage. Other than that, it was fantastic. Okay. All right. Next up. Metamorphical, what is your thoughts on the music and songs? Well, I had several fangirl scream moments when I watched through it originally. Um, it was so great to hear these orchestral versions of the classic themes and to hear them, them you know, used in this story, to hear them with a brand new breath of life, and they really added to the emotion. I mean, we can nitpick where some songs weren't used in the correct place, but at the end of the day, I mean, I mean, it was just a perfect uh, homage to the original series. And uh, I really hope that we hear these uh, music scores in the TV series going forward. And these don't become just a one-off thing where they're in this special, then they're locked away, or we have to wait till the next sequel, if one happens, to hear them. Um, now, on the singing... Yeah, I wasn't real into that. I've never been a real fan of any of the songs in there. I mean, frankly, I uh, could have done without hearing Troublesome Trucks, which I know is uh, is probably going against the grain here. I feel like like they could have saved a specially really useful engine, put it at the back, and rather used that space for additional storytelling time rather than done the video montage with the song, which felt like it was shoehorned in there. Uh, but hearing the rest of the score was just amazing. And like I said, fangirl screams all around. That's it for me. All right. Okay, next up, it's Henry the Green. What is your thoughts on the music's and, music and songs? Well, I, I guess I, I don't have too much more to say that hasn't been already said. I mean, I actually... Up until now, I hadn't really been paying much attention to the music since since the CGI, well, even since HIT took over and Junior and Michael left the show, the, the music just seemed to drop off for me because I was so focused on the stories and later the voices. Um, I mean, I'm as glad as anybody else that the old themes have uh, uh, made a reappearance and... Uh, I, I share the, the 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 idea that really useful engine was used a little too soon. I mean, now that I think about it, they could have used the that that old you know dun 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 do 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 do. They could have used the that music, the but theme? The busy, yeah, the busy theme. There you go. Yeah. Uh, um, they could have put that in there, but at, at the same time, I think to myself, if you know, the the bottom line is they're using more of an orchestral arrangements for the music now. And all I can say to that is we need, we need more of that. You know, this makes, this puts Thomas on a slightly higher plane above your normal kitty show. It makes it sound like this is a show of quality. Mm -hmm. So that's the, 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 those are my thoughts, I believe. Okay. Next up is Lady T. Pikachu. What is your thoughts on the, music and songs believe really useful engine was kind of weird for me because at first i heard it and i was like eh, what's this and then i heard it again and it grew on me just a little bit and then like later in the song hearing it that second time was like uh no never mind then i heard it again and it was still like mm, no and then i heard it this time and it's like eh, I, c I could listen to this maybe if i were not paying attention to it fully <laughs> still sing it though because i'm like that i'm just so good but as <laughs> we're uh having uh, background music was just really good. Having all those individual character themes in there, having them remixed in the background sometimes was really good. It all sounded... It was like a good callback, but it was still its own thing, which was really, really nice. Um, and yeah, there are some nitpicks you could have on that, like Edward's theme here and stuff like that, but it's not really that big a deal in the long run, and it sounds fantastic as well for me. Alright, and that's it for you? Is that it for you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, for my thoughts on the music, I'm, I'm going to kind of echo everybody else here. Yeah, it was really 
really good. And also on the song, uh, yeah, really useful engine. Kind of took me a bit, kind of like, uh, what did I just hear? It sounds a little weird, but yeah, it kind of grew on me after a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm still a little indecisive about it, but, um, the one I really like is the Troublesome Trucks one. That actually seems to fit this a little more. I, 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 I didn't see, I know, I wish I had seen that before what they could have thrown that into the series. That's it. it, it the songs were all right. The Troublesome Trucks, but yeah, the really useful engine one should have been at the end. And they could have used uh, Thomas's original theme for the first time around. Um, as for the music itself, when I first heard it in the, the clips of a of a Sir Topham hat when we first see him in his office and uh, the Gordon and Thomas storyline, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, they brought it back. They brought back the original music. And that, that was just my, I mean, already at that point, I was already hyperventilating over everything else that was revealed about Thomas. <laughs> Uh, the, the Sword Art's Legend of the Lost Treasure, uh, the return of some railway series characters. I mean, that I was just go, almost going into overload there. So, yeah, um, it was great. And I think my favorite bit of music would have to be uh, Edward's theme. That I love that. It's got a kind of nice, I, I want to say kind of almost a, a Western sort of thing, a cowboy Western sort of thing to it. I, I really liked it. It was good. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, overall, the, the music was very nostalgic and wow <laughs> so that's my thoughts um Cerno, what are your thoughts on the songs and music well needless to say i was overjoyed to hear the old themes return finally even though edwards was often used in the wrong context i don't care because i'm glad to hear my favorite character's theme back <laughs> yeah and then the runaway theme, the new runaway theme at, a, I mean, the old runaway theme at near the end. Yeah. During the chase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and as for the actual songs, when I first heard that Really Useful Engine was going to be in the film, I groaned because I hate that song. I always have. There were so much better songs back then, like Night Train. But then when I heard it here, I actually liked it. They actually made a version of Really Useful Engine that I can tolerate. <laughs> <laughs> and Troublesome Trucks was okay, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do would have liked uh, to hear their classic laugh. Yeah. Not sure how they would make that work, though. Don't know if that might be a little Well, awkward. you see, they blew the budget on the animation. They couldn't buy enough hamsters to play the troublesome <laughs> trucks this time. <laughs> Those were, was, wasn't that Campbell and O'Donnell themselves, and they just... And they sped it up. Yeah. yeah. That was. That it was would be like nice it. to hear that old classic sound, at least in the background at some point. <laughs> I always loved that laugh. Yeah. If you actually listen closely to um, when James is crashing, you hear them laugh as they crash. Yeah, if yeah, I can like just steal... Like the song steal... says. Yep. If I can just steal the mic for a second, the distortion during James's crash and the sound effects... Oh, yeah, that oh, was... Yeah. That was really yeah. good. That it was just a made really good choice. so much of... more intense. It reminds me of Attack of the Clones with the seismic charges. Yeah. Well, it kind of reminds me of the the sound effects from the that please please don't get too mad with me. It reminds me of the uh, the 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 crashes, the the tosses, and all the the action sequences from the Transformer movies. Oh, oh yeah, well yeah, like they they really yeah. stepped it up there. Yeah, Transformers oh, yeah, Prime really uses just use sound distortion like that quite often, especially that wah oh my god mm -hmm. sound that they do. Yeah. The, the season four finale of My Little Pony did that as well. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, it, yeah, it's yeah. sort of out of place, I think. I think they just suddenly started, like with that one scene, they hadn't used sound effects to that sort of depth and complexity 
earlier in the special, and it just sort of came out of nowhere. It fit the scene, don't get me wrong, but I feel like they could have used a bit more vibrant sound effects earlier uh, leading up to it, maybe some more grinding in the chase scene or whatever, I don't know, you know, like wheels screaming or whatever. It didn't really bother me. All right. So is that is that it for you, Cerno? Is, is that yeah, it for your thoughts? I think that's about it. All right. So that's that's down. We're about halfway through our topics right now. Um, our next topic is character. Um, this discussion will involve uh, uh, the introduction of characters or the development of characters or new characters, pre- and existing characters, and all that stuff. Um, starting as usual with DM Man, what is your thoughts on character? Let me put it this way. I really like Thomas now. Like, I really like his character, and I never really liked Thomas that much. It was kind of like the Miss Mickey Mouse effect, where it's like he can't really have a personality because he's a trademark, so it's like, mm, can't have any interesting things. But now he has a personality. He's talkative, like mad talkative, and curious, and eager, and it's great! Wow, the new voice, the, the the new... He has an actual character and personality now. And it's just... Everything is good in the world. Um, and, you know, Henry was always my favorite character. And I, I didn't think he was treated that badly here. Feel Please feel free to disagree. Like, I, I, I get why people don't like it, and I'm totally cool with that. But then again, Woody Allen Henry, it just... It's so wrong and yet so right. <laughs> Um, but like I said, Annie and Clarabelle stole the show. Gordon didn't do that great, but he had some great lines. James, James, oh, I love the, the, the bits where he was like blowing away the smoke. That was hilarious. Um, um, yeah, I like, I like the crane characters. If the cranes have characters now. Yes. Awesome. Great idea. Gwyn. Okay. That, that's cool. Um, I just, no opinion on that. Edward, you know. Whatever. Oh, the fat controller. He's fun. He's, he's just so much fun now. Um, he's just, he, 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 there's banter. There's banter between the people, and it's so wonderful. It gives that that extra spark of life. It's oh my gosh, it's a real railway, not just a generic kids show. And the characters happen to be trains. Yeah, and it's speaking of. Uh, I want to just throw this in here. Um, when you said uh, Woody Allen Henry, I'm throwing that as a hashtag now. <laughs> Go for it. Let's see if it actually goes anywhere. Come on. Anyway, oh, there yeah. we go. Um, <laughs> anything else you'd like? Is that it for you, uh, DM man? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. All righty. Next up, uh, Evan, what is your thoughts on character? All right. Well, this could garner an essay unto itself, and there's going to be so many different opinions on, oh, how did they treat this one? How did they treat that one? But let's let's get the dirty work out of the way first. The characters that really needed some oomph in this special and in general, Henry. Uh, Woody Allen Henry is great if they would just stick with it. Um, I think they when they introduced Henry in their flashback, which was brilliant, by the way, for, you know, Henry getting stuck in the tunnel, I think they could have added another layer and kids would still relate to it. They could have said, oh, Henry's actually afraid of the rain, but he's going to use his, you know, narcissism as a cover for that. And it's just like, oh, I don't want to go out there. Uh, It's not because I'm afraid or anything. It's, uh, oh, my paint. I don't want to spoil my paint. Um, They could have done that. Um, Gordon... Up until halfway, let's give or take, about halfway in there, Gordon was Gordon, as I said before. It it, it just felt one note, and it's just like, oh, yay, he's big and important, woohoo. But then they they got to the point where it was the story of uh, Thomas and Gordon, and he got to show Thomas who's boss. (laughs) And man, did he come in. it, it It just felt right. Gordon was finally the character we knew him to be. Edward is finally, I think, the best of the characters that we've seen here. Actually, James and Edward. Let's start with James. James is the new engine on the block before Thomas. So he's coming in there, and he's trying to prove himself by being really uh, sure of himself and falsely because he's he's got a defect. He's got wooden brakes, and I think they played that up maybe a little too much 
uh, with the wooden break jokes, but they definitely hit hit the right uh, balance with his character there. Edward, the best character in this show, far none, and about time. They haven't really treated him well for a number of seasons, uh, but they really showed bringing you know the you know mil- middle aged Edward who's been around and liked playing with trucks, and then showing him getting a little bit wiser and a little bit more caring as this special went on when he had someone to take under his wing. And I really appreciated a return to form with Edward. So aside from that, I think it was really good. Uh, I think they could have done more with Glenn, but he was a cameo, so mm, that that's going to be saved for later. Bye, Glenn toys! <laughs> 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 Alrighty. Next up, Metamorphical. What is your thoughts on character? Okay. Well, I'm probably the kind of person who reads way too far into the characters and their interactions. And first off, let me start with James, since I think James just stole the show, at least for me, on this one. Like, with the way they introduced the wooden breaks. With that, what they did was they gave him kind of a little bit of inferiority complex, which he has to, which, you know, carries on throughout the, uh, his interactions because you know ultimately he ends with a crash he doesn't really get over that i think that does set him up for the more antagonist role he takes on in series 18 i think that that little dose of continuity with the way they built the character is ingenious um i even you know even though a lot of people disagree with me imagine that it was supposed to be him in the flashback with henry because once again he wasn't able to accomplish anything so, literally, he got red paint, but he's still not special. I mean, Thomas showed him up, and that whole interaction there was brilliant. Um, I, I actually like the new take on Henry. Henry um, has a relatable fear that, you know, I think the kids were supposed to, to relate to, and I relate to it because, you know, I'm afraid of balloons in real life, and that's a ridiculous fear. In real life, people, generally speaking, don't care what you're afraid of, and they will throw you in the tunnel. Um, now, I do think that they could have masked it with fake vanity, like Evan said, and that would have been cool and kept to, you know, kept to a more middle ground take. Um, I like what, the, also liked what they did with Edward. Edward starts off, you know, pretty much his, uh, his dark age self. And then he grows into the mentor, the wise old mentor that we're familiar with. They even gave him a little bit of a curmudgeon. Uh, take which I appreciate Thomas Thomas we can't not talk about Thomas Thomas is adorable in the special starts out as a greenhorn grows into the um, great um, hero that he's supposed to be so to speak with his rescuing James gets his branch line he's just fantastic in this special and you know even the cameos like Glenn Glenn is uh, I think they set Glenn up for a future episode, I mean, the bottom line is I loved what they did with the characters. I like the way that they're still writing the characters. The writing is, well, it all comes back to the original material, but the way that they set it up to where everything flows so linearly with the way they blended the story just allowed for some great character development and kind of actually made, I think, bridges a little bit with the CGI series, the series 17 and 18, with what we see in the special is that it? Uh, yeah. Or is, uh, I think I'll cut yeah. it off there because I could monologue about that for hours. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, next up, Henry the Green. What is your thoughts on character? Okay. Well, most of the big things have already been touched upon. Uh, the 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 different take on Henry. The welcome return to form for Edward. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> um. But one thing I guess I'll touch upon that ended up surprising me was the giving of character to the breakdown cranes, Judy and Jerome. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first heard about that, that was the one thing that gave me pause about this. And, and I thought, really? You know, this sounds superfluous and another, you know, buy my toy situation. Um, but the way that they ended up being written where they do have a distinct personality that I don't think we've quite seen yet within the show where they're very jumpy, but only because 
they're not used all that often. So that when they think, oh, boy, we got a job. Look, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, it, it, to me, it was enjoyable. And I, I found myself by the end thinking, yeah, you know, I could see some more with these characters. I think it, it's not just uh, uh, a, a shiny, shiny, to use that oft maligned phrase. <laughs> um, so... So yeah, I mean, I guess those, those, that, that's my two cents. That um, in addition to all the familiar characters being used well, the two characters that I expected to be useless at best um, actually had some nice moments and left me wanting more, which is how it's supposed to be. That's all. That's all for you. All righty. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's I would pretty much agree with that. But um, I'll wait my turn after Lady T Pikachu. And speaking of which, it's her turn. <laughs> Lady T Pikachu, what is your thoughts and on uh, characters? Well, there are a lot of char different characters I could talk about. But what I mostly want to talk about is the relationship that uh, Thomas and Edward have, which I think is adorable. I love the relationship that they have in this morning in this movie. I, I feel like uh, Thomas is like this cute little kid and I f it, make it makes me feel like Edward is just kind of like this parent and it's r a really cute relationship for me and to me I feel like Edward's kind of like a mom and I really, I just love that relationship so much and Thomas <laughs> is so, so, so cute I can't get enough of how Thomas has developed as a character over the years he's so adorable and yeah this new what we're getting out of Edward is fantastic again. Having his coming back to how he used to be is much appreciated. I'm really glad about that. That's pretty much all I have to say on that. Okay. So, for me, um, I, yeah, I pretty much agree with everybody what they have said so far, especially with Henry um, and James, uh, Thomas and Edward. Yeah, on 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 uh, Henry the Green, I I agree with the 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 breakdown train. I was kind of surprised by that uh, that the breakdown train was getting uh faith was getting characters as well, and I I do like their characteristic that very kind of uh, hypersensitivity I think is what you would call it, and I I really 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 hope that they bring them into the series in the long run. The same with Glenn, and I'll, I'll talk about that uh, Glenn a little bit later, but yeah, the char character development was was really interesting in this special. I, I really... I liked it. And on the subject of Jerome and Judy, I don't think they actually got any merchandise, did they? They must have. I haven't seen a wooden toy yet. Not yet, I don't think. Really? That's not to say... I'm sure, I'm sure it's coming. Yeah, there's got to be something coming, or coming out, like, really soon. Yeah. yeah. So far, the only one I've seen is Glynn. I doubt that's there... That's the only one I've ever seen. I doubt they're one-off characters anyways. I think we will see toys before long. Oh, that'd be good. I, yeah, I mean, so far, the only one that they've got on wooden right now is the James in his original color, black. That's the only one they've got so far on wooden. Don't they have, like, the original Thomas toy that Audrey made in the 40s? Oh, yeah, they have that. Yes, yes. They, they, yes. They, they made that, but they, I mean, in relationship to the special in particular, um, the only ones that we see uh, really get anything is uh, Thomas in his original livery and Glenn and the James. James is sexy James and black. Sexy yep. And black. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Once you go black, so, are you got so <laughs> Uh, Johanna, unrelated note, are any of you guys thinking of buying any merchandise? Because I kind of want to buy some merchandise just to support this thing. Um, well, I, I, was, I was thinking of buying the book and trying to track down that, that 70th anniversary Thomas set with the, with, the, with the original wooden model model. Yes. I, I want to get my hands on that. I, I guilt bought a couple of the minis. I'll, ha I'll probably buy some more merchandise to support this, especially seeing how the last trip to Walmart I saw where somebody had stolen all the minis out of the package. Um, what? Geez. But last trip to Walmart, the, when I went into Walmart, the, you know, the minis come in that package that have the question mark in them. I looked at uh -huh. that, and 
all the all the packages had been ripped open already and someone had stolen out the uh, mini that goes inside it. There were only two left that were untouched. And I bought those two because I thought, you know what? I'll go ahead and buy these and at least give them money for that. Wow. I got James and Salty. So not too bad. Huh. Yeah, I think, the, I think the toy and uh, the merchandise train has uh, left the station for me. If I see an opportunity to purchase them for a charity, you know, Toys for Tots or something, I'll definitely pick them up next time. I likely yeah. won't be buying anything. Off the, uh, one of the big reasons is I don't live in a place where there's a lot of good stores. And also, uh, I'm kind of, kind of passed up on that. <laughs> I haven't bought merchandise in a while. But, you know, if I see anything good, I'll try to buy that. Uh, no, 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 no. I haven't bought merchandise in a while. My last purchase for Thomas was It's Great to Be an Engine VHS. <laughs> All right? Yeah. I think I think I take the cake for that. Yeah. Just to jump in here, we, we haven't we haven't let Cyrano talk about right. characters yet. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, please. We're yeah. terrible people. Oh, I know we're, we're we're breaking protocol again, folks. ADD man, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, sorry about that, Cyrano. No, Cyrano, sorry again. Anyway, uh, what is your thoughts on character? Well, on the subject of merchandise, I can't afford. The only thing I could afford was renting the film once. I'm saving up money for a convention later in the year, so... Okay, uh, characters. A lot to talk about, but thankfully uh, you all have covered a lot of stuff already. Henry doesn't... Henry is one of my favorites... But the way he's treated here doesn't bother me. The Starwing Corona on the forums pretty much put into words what my thoughts on that were. As someone who suffers anxieties myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think we're going to have to like put a link to that in this video some some point. Yeah, right? link right in the doobly-doo. Right, a link to that, that article in particular. Cause yeah, that... that that really does help a lot. Help help people see uh, how they're doing Henry at this time of the yeah. Both Corona and Anaki had great posts in there. Yeah, they won the thread, in my opinion. Anaki yeah. really won my respect back, in that thread. Yeah, yeah. Back to Cerno. And yeah, I like the way James was utilized with an inferiority complex and stuff, and always trying to mimic Gordon. He's starting at black, but finally getting his nice red paint and new brake blocks. And Danny yeah. and Clarabelle. And, but I, I could go on and on about Edward, as he's always been my favorite. Same here. I like Edward, too. He's my second favorite. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, anything else you want to add, Suno? Everyone else pretty much has already covered what I would have said about Edward. Definitely like the way he's been utilized the past. Like, they did him well in Old Reliable Edward, and he's just as, and he's even, and he's just as good here. He's even better in Old Reliable Edward thanks to this special, because of the way this special built up to his character in Old Reliable er Edward. I just admire the way that that, that there's linear continuity. I love the way Thomas protects him in Old, Re old Reliable Edward. It's cute. Yeah. Hmm. I think we can agree on that. Big time. Um, anything else you would like to say, Cerno? Yes. I could say quite a lot about Judy, Jerome, and Glenn. Because they are both wish fulfillments for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ever since I was a little kid, I always wished that the breakdown cranes had faces. Same here, actually. I, I always I, wished I, all the vehicles had faces because the inconsistency always bothered me. I have OCD, so... <laughs> when, I don't get when people complain about a vehicle not wanting a vehicle to have a face. Like, when people complain about Henrietta having a face, I, I'm just flabbergasted at that. Yeah, Same I don't here. get that one. Yeah, what's yeah. the big deal? 
Yeah. Makes it a character. She just needs a better episode than Cross Signals, and I'll like her, probably. <laughs> yeah. She was the best part about that episode. Agreed. But anyway, I had always come up with my own ideas for them. I I actually named them Grapple and Hoist after the Crane Transformers. <laughs> I'm sensing a spin-off. But, uh, I think Judy and Jerome are good. Oh, shit. <laughs> that one. Shameless. Shameless. I think that ship has sailed. Yeah. No, maybe. yeah, they already destroyed the Illinois Railway Museum in the, the last one, so... <laughs> Really? They, did. they oh. were sitting on all the trains in the on, for the Illinois Railway Museum outside of Chicago. Oh, boo! In, well, that, in the fourth well, that's Transformers, I've never seen film? that movie. Okay, in, we're derailing yeah. things again. Yeah, dang it! Sheesh! Oh man, what are we doing? Sorry, we and, I'm glad that, and I'm glad that one of them's a female. Yeah, that I was very glad about that yeah. as well. Yeah, it helps. It helps diversify. Uh, Genders, I think you might say. Yeah. I hope these two get into a fight with Rocky. Come on, bro. Oh boy. Yes. <laughs> and then. <laughs> uh, oh, is that? I'll take war. you anytime. <laughs> is that is that it for you? Uh, so Sarah? the coach didn't get a face as well. Yeah, I was kind of I was kind of surprised at that. I was kind of somewhat hope secretly hoping that the coach would have like a face yeah that would have been nice too but yeah especially after the introduction of slip coaches it really seems inconsistent yeah, yeah. does indeed so um is that it for you sir no or is there more yes glenn mm-hmm. poor glenn yeah. i did not know about the coffee pots when i was little i found out about them a few years ago thanks to the wiki but ever since then, I have been obsessed with them. I never in a million years would have thought that we would see a coffee pot in the show. Ditto. An engine that wasn't even in any of the actual books, but instead in the island of Sodor, it's People, History, and Railways. It was a, They were only mentioned in that. Mm-hmm. I thought we would get railway series characters before we ever got a coffee pot, but here's the other way around. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just. Thank you, Lord Brenner. <laughs> People <laughs> well, complain well about. Well put, Cyrano. Well put. Yeah. Awesome. When it comes to Glenn, like I don't. I was a little disappointed at the amount of time he was in there, but I'm just glad he's in the show at all. Mm. That's more than I could have ever hoped for, and they. He'll get more. And I'm. And I love that they actually did refer to them by name. Exactly. Called them coffee pots. And they clarified that there were more than one. Yeah. And that they worked on the far, far line. And why they were called coffee pots. Why they got the name. Yeah. And I actually... I actually like this explanation for why Thomas is number one better than Audrey's, to be honest. And people are going to hate me for saying that, but... I will agree. I will agree. It makes a, it always, a lot more sense. It always it makes sense at first, but it's pretty good now. I never liked the idea of Thomas, like being on the rail, being on Sodor as long as Edward. That just rubbed me the wrong way, and I'm pretty sure that wasn't what Audrey originally intended. It was just the marketing team that made Thomas be number one, so he had to think of an explanation. Mhm. Alrighty, so. Um, are you, is that it for And, I mean, there's no doubt they're going to bring, bring Glenn back. And we'll see what happened to him. I would like to see yeah. him without all the moss and stuff and actually moving. Same here. I don't get I why he wrote to rescue him. I don't, get why, <laughs> I don't get why some people actually don't want to see him again. They want to just be forgotten about and have it be implied that he was scrapped. But they said... Yeah, they can't... Yeah. The, the That's the bitter more, but they won't do they that. They spent all that yeah. time... They spent all that time rendering rendering him and Judy and Jerome just because they're older. I mean, Sodor is the place where older vehicles can still find work. But apparently for some people, having a coffee pot still working would stretch believability too far for them, which I don't get. And a Sterling single is okay? Yeah. yeah I'm just saying. Older. 
She's old. I'm just Emma. saying. Edward, Edward's older than Glenn. Glenn was built yeah. in like, what, 1900 or something? And Edward is in the 1896. Emily is around that same... Emily's type was around that same time. Stepney is even older than Edward. He was built in the 1870s. He's way... He's decades older than Glenn. And he's... Save a bro. Save a bro. I can think of somebody else who's way older. Oh, Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. 1829. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the point of fiction is to have things that you can't have in real life. I mean, there has to be some realism, especially in a series like this, but... Well, that's why like, I think it's some. Sorry, go ahead, Cyrano. But things like a working coffee pot, and also inauthentic libraries. I mean, those are pretty minor things. No, no, think, not allowed. Can't have it. That would that would hurt me inside. It's <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. same thing with loading gauges, because I just say, this uh, regaging is a thing. So, I don't really care about big American engines being on there. Hey, leave my engines alone. Don't put faces on them and pull off their flying plumps, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you look at Timothy, for instance, um, he's from what I've read, his type of engine can actually be modified for any game. Yeah, I read that, too. Yeah. I read that, too. So that that's kind of one of the reasons why I like Timothy's, because of that, his type of engine. It's, it's a little more realistic. Yeah, you didn't expect. So honestly, it's why if Sam ever did actually appear in the show, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. I am American, I so I do like seeing a... I'd love to... Yeah. S- I'd get a lot of hate for it, but I would like to see an Amtrak diesel in the show, simply because Amtrak is the one railway that I actually really have a personal connection with. Uh, ch- like wait, F- whoa, whoa, whoa. A uh, Genesis locomotive or the F forties? I, I, I thought he was know, talking just, about the Acela. Just some Amtrak engine. Acela? Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's going too far. That's going some too Amtrak far. Some Amtrak engine. <laughs> like a smaller I'm sorry, I got but... curious. Yeah. Believe it or not, um, years ago, I actually thought of an engine like that. It was a Genesis character. It was a Genesis <laughs> uh, Amtrak, and get the name I gave him. The name I thought for him. Genesis? Adam? Jenny? Jenny. Yeah. Kevin. Kevin. Didn't see that coming. Uh, I was too much alliteration. Fail, thanks. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, back to character. Uh, I like how that none of the British people on our forums are going to have any idea what we're talking about. Oh, boy. None. <laughs> oh, boy. Sorry, yeah. guys. Sorry. Google yeah. is your friend. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyway, back. Um, Cerno, are you are you done? Or is yeah, I think I'm pretty much done with characters. Yeah, I think we kind of went way over. Huh? I hope to see more of Glenn. I want yes. my coffee pots. <laughs> I'd even love to Absolutely. see the other yeah, well, three. I want my cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a pot. I love. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'd love to see the other three. Yes. I'd uh, like to see a blue one, as that's my favorite color. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, we man, we went way over on. Character. Maybe he's we, the, we, we just talk. We, nah, we, it's all good. Maybe we he's one of the track. treasures. We went off track. Brim shot. Hey, yes. we're not as bad as Force Cash does. Come on. <laughs> anyway, let's let's get back on track, okay? So yeah, we just finished talking about character, and man, we really had a lot to say about that. Especially you, sir. And I was kind of surprised by that. I like that. That was really good. Very yeah, good. I guess I've been getting my courage up. Yeah. There you go. Call this talking. Yeah. Round of applause for him, people. <laughs> oh, jeez. People, not robots. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. I've got a lot of passion for the breakdown cranes and the coffee pots, so... And Edward. It yeah. shows. And Henry, too. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's, get to, let's get back on track, can we? Can we get back on track now? Um, go ahead. Sure <laughs> All righty. Um, now, this is... I, I think some of us have already kind of talked a bit on this uh, little topic here, and we're going to maybe elaborate that on a little bit more here. And this topic is what you didn't like. And I guess that that topic is pretty self-explanatory. What didn't you like about The Adventure Begins? Um, the end, man. 
What didn't you like? What are your thoughts? Sarni wants to think that was kind of directed at me since maybe I was a bit overly negative earlier. It's out of love. It's out of love. Um, <laughs> but see, yeah, regarding the whole controversy about Henry, I didn't mind it. But then again, I totally understand where it was coming from. And I don't think that annoyance would have been there had they just changed the smoke box. They didn't have to build a new model. They could have just changed the smoke box from the Bell Pair smoke box to the other one. Also, with that, they could have um, finally gotten the windows right. Seriously, there is zero excuse for this. I'm sorry, you've so gone through three three different production studios and Lord knows how many models when the Ertl toy is more accurate than the show models over like 15, over 15 years. Rest in peace, Ertl. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Can we please bring them back? Or at least, like, ha- wait, Mattel owns Hot Wheels. Maybe they can, like, arrange really high-quality models. That would be awesome. And, yes, in the show, get the right windows for Henry. I mean, what I'm thinking is maybe it would be kind of cool is the Black 5 shape will be Henry's old shape and his new shape will be like just a kind of different black five shape, maybe like a longer firebox or something with the right windows. Um, that'd be nice. We left our yeah. windows around here. <laughs> yeah, Dear um, Lord Printer, please fix the windows. <laughs> windows nitpick, aren't nitpick, us. Nitpick. Yeah, because like it, it's only nitpicks that are really issues. Like everything else is yeah. just, you know, hmm, H-N-N-N-G with the guy in the mm. <laughs> and, yeah, that. Other than the bitching, I sorry. So other than the whining I was doing earlier, um, mostly positive. That's all I have to say for for negative. All right. Next up, Evan. What is your what did what didn't you like about the special? All right. Um, gloves are coming off now. Uh, the, I'm going to take it down to just three major points because there you could nitpick this, and I know that there are a lot of people that are like me and people that are even more so than me, like purists, that will say that this, 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 and this, and this are wrong. But let's take a step back and look at three issues that I think we can all sort of relate to. First, getting it out of the way, for those who don't know, Henry's shape. Um, in the original books and in the in series one, which follows the books, uh, Henry had a different shape. And let's just be honest here, I think this is plainly better than what the books did and what the original series did. Blasphemy, perhaps? Maybe. But um, Audrey wanted Henry to have a definitive shape, and the illustrator had no clue. Uh, So he had to adapt, and the accident and making him a Black uh, Five-type engine was the solution to that. I don't mind it. At first, I did. I'm going to be honest, I was hoping to see sort of a Gordon kind of clone, uh, and but what would be the purpose? They didn't even go into the Flying Kipper in this special, so I don't think it's that big of a knock. Um, Thomas's uh, livery is another nitpick that could be an issue. Um, some people said that he's supposed to actually be some sort of a tan and cream color, uh, but I don't mind this... Uh, you know, blue-green slash green sort of color, uh, it kind of works. And it shows that engines can have different liveries. And when they come to a new place to work and live, that they shed their old skin and put on a new suit and go about their lives. Uh, second big thing is James's crash. Uh, personally, I love the uh, chase sequence to an extent, Um, They did a lot of work with that, and they really built up the tension. But where they failed was that they didn't put enough time at rescuing James, at pulling the trucks out of the mud and getting revenge on the trucks, saying, this will teach you a lesson, that you don't push engines off the rails like they did in the Series 1 episode. Uh, The books didn't do it either, but I think they really showed the fact that Thomas was angry and wanted to help James and get it off. And I think that would have made the payoff of getting a branch line all the sweeter. They should have put more time and more, you know, scenes on that, and they didn't. The third point is the cameo. The coffee pot cameo, everyone loved it. We, We love these little Easter eggs 
to the backstory and the history, but it was just so quick. The foreshadowing of it was very uh, sledgehammer subtle. Uh, they they could have done with Edward, you know, only saying, well, actually, and then cut it right there so the kids would think about it. They could have made it a running joke. They could have said, I'll show you who's a coffee pot or something like that later on, just to hint back at it. And then the payoff is to see him sleeping on a siding. They should have also made him sleeping. And then wake up and say, oh, you're the new number one now. Mm-hmm. I hope you have as good a time as I did, Thomas. Uh, and then shown like a little flashback of him with, you know, Annie and Clarabelle or some old coaches and then showing how proud he was to pass the mantle on. I think that was a missed opportunity. And for an extra, what, three minutes, it would have added so much more. And that those are really my big dislikes for the special. Agreed. Alrighty, next up, Metamorphical. What didn't you like about the special? Uh, wasting screen time on a really useful engine instead of using that as more storytelling time. Come on, you could have fit another book segment in there. Um, that's my main dislike. I mean, that I can think of. That's pretty much it for me. I mean, I love the whole thing. I'm pro- Maybe I'm a sheep. Um, I don't have anything else to really say that that I didn't like other than that and the songs. We don't need the songs anymore. We could have done without both songs and thrown, thrown more more uh, special music in for uh, Thomas and the, tra- the trucks pushing him. They could have even done two different versions of the runaway theme. I think that's it for me. I don't know if you're a sheep because there are a lot of people who find things to nitpick and hate this special over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, Henry the Green, what did you like about the special? Okay, well, there were Evan kind of got the one of my big ones, which was the the payoff to the coffee pot subplot, if you will. Um, just pr- like like he said, I I thought it was very rushed the way that oh they've been alluding to the existence of these engines, they only did it once, but then all of a sudden, boom, there he is, and he's not only there, he's out in the open and he's talking. Um, if it had been me, I would have had Glenn in a shed. You're like just able to see Thomas out in the distance, leaving the station, off to start his journey on the branch line, and he says to himself, So that's the new number one. Well, I hope he you know, I wish him luck. And and that would have whet everybody's appetite to see, ooh, there's the coffee pot. Oh boy! I hope we see more of him. So, so that was one thing. Yes. If there was anything else that 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 hasn't been mentioned yet, it's something. It's not so much I didn't like. It's something that I wish it a missed opportunity, and that is more stuff with the crews. I mean, we got that wonderful bit of business on Gordon's Hill, and I was thinking of places of where they could have had more dialogue from the crews or the railway personnel like in the scene where thomas rushes after james's crash when thomas rushes back to the yard and runs off with the breakdown train and sir top hat says well thomas where are you going wouldn't it have been great to have cut to a signalman like in series one leaning out of the signal box yelling james is off the line we need the breakdown train quickly and they look and they say well thomas is already off and running so <laughs> yeah. way that, ahead of yeah. you yeah, yeah. exactly and, and that would have been you know an extra little a, a little joke you're kind of leavening the tension just a little bit that we've that that we just got with the crash and everything so right. it's it's I, it, I only i only don't like the interaction with the crews because i i know they could have done more with it and i and i hope they do more with it in the future mm-hmm. um and now that I've said that, uh, am I able to quickly run to the bathroom while everybody else takes their turn? Okay. All right. Be I'll be right back. <laughs> I think we have to get break. Oh, I feel you there. <laughs> All right. Um, next up, Lady T. Pikachu. What didn't you like about the special? There's not a lot to say on my end because I really, I really like the special. What I, going back to the music, it's mostly just about the vocalist on really useful engine. That's pretty much all I have to say. Because that was a really strange choice. Hmm. Yeah, I would kind of agree with you on that. 
Auto tune. <laughs> Please. Uh -huh. <laughs> Any anything else you'd like to say? No, nope, not really. Everything else has pretty much been covered. Alrighty. Well, now being it my turn. For me, yeah, I would I would pretty much echo uh uh Evan on his thoughts on it, um especially around the coffee pot and Henry the Green. That 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 was to me it felt rushed. It felt like they could have done more with Glenn. And I was really hoping that he would kind of appear when uh, Thomas is pulling his express. And I mean, like, then Thomas sees him and he's like, what are you doing? I haven't seen you before. He's like, oh, I'm working a branch line. And he's like, a branch line? What's a branch line? And he then starts the, – the, the branch line kind of seeps into his mind for a little bit. And there and then uh, – yeah, I was, I was really hoping to see more of Glynn and – yeah, and there and there was other little bits of animation goofs, and of course Henry. But yeah, my my main one was was Glenn. It, it felt a little too rushed, in my opinion. I wish they had done more with him. And now, Cherno, what didn't you like about the special? Uh, it's all nitpicks. Most of the things that bothered you guys didn't even bother me. Oh. I wasn't bothered, but I would have liked to see more of Glenn, but I'm just glad to get any coffee pots at all. Mm -hmm. And I do like the way they ended it with. Hmm. So, is that is that is that your thought, or is uh? uh yeah. No, I got. Like I said, I've got nitpicks. More of the crews yeah. would have been nice. Mm -hmm. Like Thomas's, we didn't get anything from Thomas's crew. Yeah. That would have been nice. Especially during the chase. Mm -hmm. But a little... The little things that people haven't... No one's already mentioned... Would be... Well, Henry being in his new shape doesn't bother me because... I'm pretty sure in universe he's in his old shape. And it's like, if they had the budget and time, they probably would have. Yeah. Or if they could be certain that they would be adapting Flying Kipper sometime in the future, but... Okay. But I'm pretty sure in-universe he is meant to be in his old shape, so... Yeah. What we're seeing isn't what's going on in-universe. As for nitpicks that I do have... Well, I would have liked it if... They had taken... Like, if they had corrected the mistakes of the model era and have the events happen at the correct locations. Like Thomas... Cr like Thomas... stopping at the buffers at Wellsworth, and working there shunting, and James going through there, down Gordon's Hill. Yeah, that would that would make a little more sense. Now that you bring that up. Uh-huh. Hmm. That hadn't even crossed my mind, but you're absolutely correct. Yeah. Had a that perfect actually... opportunity to to showcase the locations, and they they didn't. It's like they if don't. My memory, if my memory serves me, um, uh, Thomas in, in the story, Edward has said he's heading back home to get uh, to deliver a train, and his home is Wellsworth, and Thomas was taking his train to Wellsworth. So you're right, you know. He should have been. He should have gone to Wellsworth, not not Marin. Of course, this he's starting at Tinmith at Tinmith or Napford rather than Vickerstown. But you know, maybe he could have taken the train across the island and then taken it back. That way, he huh. would still end up at Wellsworth. Huh. Interesting. I'm very surprised that didn't cross our minds to begin with. Or if the crash happens at Marin, at least still have James being pushed down the hill by the freight cars like he's supposed to. Right. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's no, no hill between Tidmouth and Natford. So I don't know. I mean, unless there's a hill on the Little Western, and James is running on the early version of that. Hmm. I, well, that I'm pretty sure it's still meant to be the hill, and they're just using Natford Station out of convenience, I guess. Yeah. It's much more iconic than a Vickers Town Station would be, I think. Yeah. Alright, so are you, are um, you done with that, Cerno, or is there any more? 
But again, in universe, in universe, it probably is meant to be it. Okay, so um, that, that's your thoughts, or that it, or the more. I guess another nitpick. Well, for one thing, Edward's theme mostly playing when Edward's not actually there. But also, I'm surprised they didn't utilize James's theme a little more. Yeah, me too. Dude, there is... You bring that up, they never used his theme. No, they yeah. did. But they did, but very briefly. Yeah, they did, they did. That's more right. briefly than... Yeah. Um, speaking of which, I I think somebody said that um near the end, uh, Percy's theme was kind of used. Bit, yeah, apparently when they mention... Apparently when the Fat Controller mentions needing an, another tank engine. Huh. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that now. Some people complain about Farquhar, and I don't get that. I mean, yeah. they complain about it not looking enough like it did in the show, but now it looks like a mixture of the show and the Railway series, which I think is a good thing. Oh, it looks good. more like yeah. a... It looks more like the Reverend's model of, of Farquhar, if you look at it. Yeah, and that's a good thing. Can't tell if the yeah. sheds are back there because of Thomas's smoke, but I hope they are. It'd be nice to see... Napford shit. It would be nice to see Farquhar sheds actually at Farquhar instead of at Tidmouth, <laughs> like it was in season two. <laughs> but, and I do. I think the little scene with Glenn at the end was perfect, a perfect passing of the torch thing. So no nit, no nitpicks there. And oh, and instead of, I do think instead of that branch that Thomas hits. Instead, it could have been the shunter's pole. It could have slipped out of his hands. Yeah. And could have been that instead. That would have made more sense. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that, that would have. Also, I feel like he didn't have to constantly tell the, uh, the guard or conductor to, uh... Hurry up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's, uh... I'm pretty sure he knows what the situation is. Right. All right. Is that, is that, like is that, maybe that if in, maybe if instead he had been he had his crew, his driver and fireman wanted to give up, but he told them, but he tells them not to. I think that would have worked a little better. Huh. Huh. Yeah, I guess that would have worked. Yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. And now that we've gotten our what we didn't like out of the way, now oh, comes actually what? I forgot one last thing. Uh -huh. They could have yeah. also had uh, Gordon could have instead of stopping at when Gordon is pulling Thomas along, instead of stopping at Wellsworth, he could have stopped at Croven's Gate like he was supposed to in the books. Huh. Yeah, that's right. Because the express is what I believe non-stop, right? Almost non-stop. It's not usually supposed to stop at Wellsworth, although I'm okay with, like, I'm okay with it stopping there in the recent seasons, because maybe it could just be a recent timetable change, and Wellsworth becomes a regular stop. With how busy <laughs> Brendam Harbor has become, it would probably make the bran Edwards branch line more busy. So maybe it's become, the station becomes important enough for the Express to stop at. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it now. Okay. Aside right, from the now, breakdown coach. Now that we've talking. gotten our, what we didn't like out of the way, let's get back to a little more pleasant theme of our favorite moment. What did we most like about The Adventure Begins? And we're starting off with DM Man. What did you like most about The Adventure Begins? What was your favorite moment? Yeah, do I have to pick just one? You could say the whole thing if you want. No, no, that's cheap and lame. Um, <laughs> Darn, oh. stole my answer. Sorry. <laughs> it's all yours, you can take it. Um, gosh. Anyway. Um, I, I loved all the bits with the crews. Like, it wasn't just that And Yeah, the one with Gordon, that was like, that was, that was, the, that was probably my favorite individual moment. Oh, the credits, the end credits. <laughs> <laughs> the, the railway series images in the show officially acknowledged. Yay. Um, I'm going to be short and leave it at that. Okay. He was just happy it was over. 
<laughs> yes. Uh, no, no, no. Yes, I can leave. Right. Okay. Next up, Evan. What was your favorite moment? My favorite moment is actually something that almost got overlooked. Um, there's a scene where Thomas is shunting in the station yard, and it's not the one everyone's thinking of right now. It's not the long panning shot. That's that's my second favorite. I love that long panning shot as the day kind of time lapses over. But it's actually just before that where Thomas is bumping the trucks, uh, you know, in front of, I think, where the breakdown train is going to be. And there's a van that's on the far right, and the camera's looking just past it. And there's a station in the background, and it's almost shot for shot the same as the camera work in series one and two. And it just feels so great, so nostalgic to see that camera work, uh, the depth of the yard. And he kind of bumps them and then stops and bumps them again to push them. And that's exactly how Thomas was wrangling the trucks and exactly how Edward was wrangling trucks. And it felt so, so great. I I can't think of any words for it. It's so nostalgic. And I love that scene. (laughs) Yeah, I think I know what you talked about. I remember you said something when we got there earlier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. And that, that's it for you, Evan? Yep. All right. Next up, Metamorphical. What is your favorite moment? Well, my favorite moment was probably the Edward and Gorn scene with Edward pushing Gorn up the hill. The really good close-up of Ed, I mean, of Gorn's driver set. Because, you know, that's always been my favorite part of the steam engine. I'm just fascinated by all that motion. And the textures and the gradient and the the cat's eye view and the uh, impression of how big and powerful and how weighty that is. That's something that I love the models, but I never got really got that impression of weight and size with the models like I do with the CGI. That and some of the scenes on the station, the station's platform and that cat's eye view. I'll have to give Knuckles the, the credit for originally pointing that out, but just some of the shots on the station platforms and on the hill of that cat's eye view are just fantastic. Those are my favorite things. And uh, those were some of my favorite, most memorable scenes, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. Henry the Green, are you there? Yep, I'm, I'm here. Uh, um, okay. Well... Honestly, I have a hard time narrowing it down. I mean, I, I suppose, I suppose, like I, like I said when we were watching it, I suppose the one I'll choose is my favorite. Certainly, the one that felt the most satisfying was on the Gordon's Hill sequence, where Gordon's driver leans out of the cab and says, "Oh, what's he up to now?" And just in that moment, as he climbs down, you think that's all the personality we need. You know, you know, we know here's a guy who has been working with Gordon for who knows how long, knows him, knows his personality, and knows when to get in his face, if you will. He get, he gets, he walks up and says, you know, Gordon, what's your problem? We need to get going here. And it was a case where I think, you know, that is something we've been waiting for for years, you know, uh, to to have more of. So that's that's the moment that I think was my favorite because it's a it's a taste of hopefully things to come right and that that's it for you yes alrighty lady T Pikachu what is your favorite moment uh, it's actually the scene after Thomas gets his his blue livery done right after he comes to show Edward because I'm gonna say it again and I'll probably keep saying it until I die but it was Thomas is so cute. <laughs> It was a really cute scene, and he's just like, he comes in, and he's like, he tells him he's number one, he's like, does that mean I'm the best? I really liked that. Yeah, I, <laughs> it, was really, I, it was fantastic. I, I could somewhat relate with that, because I, I actually remember having a moment like that when I was younger, and then being told about it a little later on, but that that's something else entirely. Anyways, is that it for you? Yeah, that's it. Keeping it short. Alrighty. For me... Man, I I really want to just I just really want to uh oh what's the word I want to take a cheap shot here and say the whole thing I really want to say that but that that wouldn't be fair so uh for <laughs> me I really think my favorite um 
or favorites is yeah pretty much what you guys have stated already as far as uh, uh, scenes and everything being more nostalgia but I for me would have to be the breakdown train and the coffee pot those were my favorite I loved those I really loved those the, the, the coffee pot in particular I really love that they finally brought something out of the Reverend's writings that isn't exactly railway series it's something a little different if you get my meaning, right? Right. Yeah, so that that's that's me right there. I love Glenn. I love the breakdown train. And I really, 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 really hope that they we see more of them in the near future. That's I'm sure. Yeah, I hope so. And that is my my favorite thing right there. And next up, Cyrano. What is your favorite moment? I also want to say all of it. Because <laughs> it's... Making decisions. <laughs> I'm not the best decision maker in the world. Kind of comes with being OCD. <laughs> kind of comes with being OCD. Yeah. And it was nice to finally see James's crash. And beautifully animated. Glad to see that they're willing to do so, willing to do something that intense in the show again. Also, with the when the flame goes in Thomas's face as well. Yeah. Of course, I talked before about the coffee pots. Mm -hmm. It's fine to choose. I'd say Edward, the cranes, and Glenn. I don't think I could really pick a single moment. Yeah. And that, that's it for you today? Is that it? Yeah, I think that's about it. Alrighty. Now we're, we're coming near the end here, folks. Our next to last topic is overall thoughts. With everything you had just said in mind... How? What is your overall thought and impression of said special? And as always, DM man, what's your overall thought? This is what winning feels like. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to describe it. <laughs> Hashtag yeah. winning. Well, okay. Yes, uh, well, here's Hashtag what I mean. What? Um, winning. I, I gotta get a bit personal here. Uh, so yeah, I, I joined SIF in 2006. It was in the middle. It was. I'd say equally dark days. Um, I think it was just before, just after uh, Ghislaine was sold to hit. And it was just, oh gosh, you know. And, and, and things, despite some positive moments, like uh, releasing the compilation of uh, Christopher's books and re-releasing some, there was this feeling like, yes, things are wrong. And despite some positive moments that never really went away. In fact, they kept getting worse, mm -hmm. but that's changed now. And in fact, that has changed so much that Thomas and friends is evolving. It's getting not only better, it's getting good. And that was what I, I'm sure all of us waited at least 15 years for if not more, where not only is the Railway Series respected, but Audrey's other work is respected. The Railway is given a name. It's call, actually called the Northwestern Railway, finally, um, which you didn't even know about until learning about SIF. Um, and if this is the future, bring on the future. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, that, that's it for me. Next up, Evan, what is your overall thought? For me, this special was a long time coming, along with what DM Man was saying. Um, you know, when Soder Island Forums started, when my group of friends and I made it in 2002, we were just getting to the point where it was going downhill. <laughs> uh, where he said it, was, it would only be a couple of years before... We got a whole rebranding of the show, and, you know, things would have changed forever. And 
it is so great to see not a return to form, but striving for that return to form, to bring back respect and a great feel of wonderful television again. Um, one person that I watch on YouTube has said, it's not, there, there's a difference between making something relatable for children and making something watered down for children. And this is finally taking steps to making the show and its concepts relatable to children. I love this special. I love the uh, honesty. I love the respect it gives to the source material. It is so entertaining, first and foremost, uh, for the kids, but it's also entertaining for the audience that they definitely had in mind, us, the older generation who are now going to have families of their own for Thomas to you know, enrich for years to come. Exactly. I could not have said that better myself. Hmm. Okay. And then that's it for you? Yep. All righty. Metamorphical, what is, your, what is your overall thought of the special? Optimism. It has me looking so forward to what lies in the future, the uh, what specials and what new episodes, what innovations lie, lie, lie in the future, what the future is going to hold and look like. You know, because, you know, I think we've all been in that depression for so long, stuck in the dark ages. And now, you know, you know, like Dan Man said, we were, we won. We won. Um, <laughs> and now I just can't help but, but wonder what's in the future. I have a lot of faith in the writing team and a lot of faith that there's – there's some be, gonna be some great surprises in the future. We're gonna see innovation. We're gonna see some more adaptations, and it's just going to be great. And stuff, getting stuff like the adventure begins, which uh, which transcends anything for that. I mean, I love series eight, but this transcends it. Just makes me so much more positive. You know, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I'm sure everyone on SIF knows that by now. And I'm looking more forward to what lies in the future for Thomas right now than I am for Episode 7. It's just that great. And I'll leave it at that. Right. And good. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, that's saying something right there. <laughs> it is. Indeed. <laughs> Next up, Henry the Green. What is your overall thought? Well, just to take it in a, in a similar direction to uh, DM Man, Evan, and uh, Metamorphical, something like this allows me to do something that I haven't been able to do for a while. I mean, ever since the well, ever since the ever since season, series eight, whenever I've you know, brought up to people outside of my family that, you know, oh yeah, when I grew up, I watched Thomas the Tank Engine. I would always have to put the qualifier in, but I watched the old episodes. I watched the ones with Ringo Starr and George Carlin. You know, I don't, I don't mean, you know, I, and I, I'd have to say, oh yeah, the show's gone way down um, since, uh, you know, since the turn of the millennium. Um, but now, with this, I'm able to kind of hold my head up just a little bit higher and say, yeah, the show's really good now. It, it slipped for a while, but now look at these. Check out these episodes. And The Adventure Begins, it's something that I could, you know, I feel confident I could loan it to somebody and say, here, check this out. This is what, you know, this is good. This is worth your time. Um, so it's it's just a, a sense of a sense of pride has returned to everybody. Everybody's got a spring in their step. So um, I mean, I guess that's my overall thought. It's just, it's it's something that's made me very very happy. I mean, like I said, um, I hate to quote myself, but the like I said in the tale of the brave. Um, thread when we were talking about that you know the little the the little train obsessed boy in my heart gets to come out and play when i watch this now and it's a great feeling mm -hmm. so hopefully i didn't ramble too much but th those are my thoughts okay i think i think we've all had our fair share of rambling this for this session haven't we <laughs> it's been fun yeah oh yeah all right next up <laughs> lady t pikachu 
what what is your overall thought? This special is an absolute breath of fresh air. After the, well, lack of better words, after the complete shite been treated to over the past several years, when I, it it feels so nice because I I when I came back to watching Thomas, I came back to absolute devastation of a show I used to love, know and love. Yeah. But seeing this do, really does give me hope for what's to come. Like others have said already, it's really they did a really fantastic job, and I only hope that they'll get better with it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, is that is that all for you? And now for me. Um, I'm pretty much gonna... I will agree with Evan and... Uh, and uh, Metamorphical. Uh, pretty much everybody else that's spoken. This this special really... It's transcended. It has gone beyond even what I thought Tale of the Brave had, uh, had previously established. It... It had it. It was there, and and like I said when we were watching the, I think when we were watching the special, I feel that this special for those who do not have the books or even the old videos, this special is something that child that that children can be reintroduced to. This is something that children can be reintroduced to. I really think that it it is. It was brilliantly done. I loved it. I loved it. I thought that it, yes. Yes to all that. And yes to what DM Man said. This is what winning feels like. <laughs> now for Shay. Uh, uh, for, uh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say not just feels like, but what it looks like. Yes, yes, exactly. And now for Cyrano. What is your overall thought? Um, well, like other people, I was born in 1990, so I grew up with the classic, the first f five seasons, and with a little bit of season six as well, and a tiny bit of seven. I grew out of it right around the same time, well, temporarily grew out of it. Right around the same time where it went downhill, apparently. Yeah. And then when I returned, I was horrified. <laughs> yeah. I hate every single episode of seasons 8 through 16. And every single special before King of the Railway. Even Magic Railroad. Oh, dang it. I Magic, Magic Railroad, Railroad is my Railroad. least favorite You're film You're breaking of all my time. heart, man. It's like you, when people... You make the tumbleweed sad. And I've seen oh, Cool World. The tumbleweed. <laughs> no, seriously. Magic Railroad is the reason why things went downhill in the 90s, and the reason why they stayed and continued downhill throughout most of the 21st century. But I have a point, favorite. but I still... I have, a, I have a sweet spot for that movie. I love that movie. Okay, but, okay. Uh, that might have to be a different podcast. Maybe yeah. we can make okay, a different podcast true. about yeah. that. Yeah, let's, 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 let's stay on top. Yeah. Stay tuned we'll, next we'll, time. We'll do that. Yeah, next time yes. on this podcast, everything that is wrong with Thomas at the Magic Rail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a lot to say on that, even if I do love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll probably save that for next time, folks. We ought to do that <laughs> anyway. radio call-in style. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to Sierra now. Um, you shouldn't, you shouldn't take my opinions of films too seriously, because I also hate Jurassic Park. So, shots fired. Oh my god! I know. <laughs> I know. Shots fired. Just fired it through the windows now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my well, that means you also oh, don't you, like uh, what's you. it, Blue Mountain Mystery? I, I actually agree with you there. I don't actually care for that one too much. I still haven't seen that one. Anyway, what? I'm afraid. I'm afraid to see Blue Mountain Mystery. I don't know if I want it... to go back and watch anything before. Um, well, it's spoilers. It's good up until the climax, it's okay. and then just ignore it, and then the rest of the film's good. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, not, anyway, no, it's not that's good. Not reassuring. <laughs> it's definitely way better than. <laughs> it's definitely yeah, way better than uh. Oh, what's uh, Misty Island Rescue? 
It's way better than oh, it. It still yeah. sucks, but it's tolerable at least. Well, that wouldn't that wouldn't take much effort to be better than. Wait, we are getting way off topic now because we're yeah, gonna all end up in ramp mode or something like that. Bring yes. up this sea island. Let's go. Way to go, Sierra. Yeah. So I was. I was. Just... <laughs> Back to you, Sierra. Now. So even early in 2013, when we had the announcements of a new writing team, and after seeing the Sif's interview with Andrew Brenner, and even with the announcement that there'd be a railway consultant. I was still trying not to... I was still a little pessimistic. But then, in March, that DVD came out, and I watched Gordon Runs Dry, and all my pessimism just evaporated. Gordon I Runs see Dry. what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't even consider that. I just went with it because it sounded cool. I went with it because it sounded cool. But you disgust I, me! Yeah. That's a good point. To quote Ernest P. Worrell, eel. <laughs> anyway, turn so, up your overall thought of this, of this, this special. I loved King of the Railway. I uh, liked uh, every, uh, uh, and I liked Tale of the Brave even more. And this is even better than Tale of the Brave. I like every single season 18 episode, and I like all the ones from season 17 except for the Afternoon Tea Express. Yeah. Oh, that one sucks. man. Oh, it's that some right. aspects. It's some aspects, yeah. Although so. it's still better than anything Sharon Miller ever wrote. <laughs> oh, boy. Agreed. Another oh, podcast. No. A we'll bail. Bail. Abort. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, as, is, that, is that all for you? Is there one more thing you would want to say? I mean, it's gotten to the point where when I see people treating season 17 and onwards like it's no different than seasons 8 through 16, that pisses me off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Acting Ouch, like things man. haven't changed. That really... Is that... Is that is, are you done with your thoughts? Or is that... Uh, um, Jenna? Yeah, that's pretty much it. We've come a long way in such a short amount of time. I've never seen a show... Tur I've never seen such a quick turnaround for any show. Agreed. I mean, I've never seen a turnaround before. You know why? Most shows get cancelled. We've been on the air forever at this point. I was about to Agreed. say, we, we not, I've never even seen a turnaround Hmm. Well, I mean, we is, got a coffee that... pot. Yeah. We're <laughs> <laughs> never gonna let that one go. <laughs> no. That, I mean, that we're so good, we even got a coffee pot, huh? <laughs> oh, man. I could see something with the Avengers here right now. It's like, I have an uh. army. We have a coffee pot. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I've been obsessed with the coffee pots ever since I found out about them. Same why? Here. Why can I now picture all the engines at the at the sheds just eating shawarma? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, oh well, is that is that all for you, Cyrano? Yeah, is I think that that's about it. I mean, alrighty. Even with like. With Legend of the Lost Treasure, we're gonna get Mike, Rex, and presumably Bert. Spoiler alert. What? Yeah, we gotta be careful about that. Speaking of which, have you guys seen the recent video about that? I have. No. I haven't seen nope. any video, but recent I heard all video? that Look. news. What Look video? on the forums. Is, is there a... Look on the forums. Oh, there, they, we, is there it's... a trailer? Uh, clips, but... Just watch it. Go over to the forums after this and look that up. What board is it on? Look what up. It's Sword or the, the Sword Or's Legend of the Lost Treasure thread. Oh, okay. I'll mark yeah, that down. That was, <laughs> Wait, I think he was stumbled upon. I haven't looked in that thread been... in a while. I guess I'll have to now. Wait, I've been keeping up with... Hold on. I've been keeping up with that. I was on there earlier today. Yeah. 
it it just happened before we, that it just came about before yeah i we think someone this. i think someone was talking about new okay, photos is showing up on now. the wiki or something like that yeah you'll you'll this this will be interesting just the little bit that we got but anyway careful back to guys this. careful <laughs> yeah anyway back to this we're are we done with your your overall thoughts Serena? Uh, um sure. yes i am all right can I, now uh-huh can i add something real quick Yes, more, more metamorphical. I, I have The Adventure Begins, my box, in my hand right now with the DVD. I'm mm -hmm. just going to give it a big hug. Thank you. <laughs> I sleep with it. Wait. I sleep I'll with my him, copy. And I'll hug him, and I'll squeeze him, and I'll call him That's toys. funny, because uh, real quick, I just want to say... I sleep with my collection of the com I mean with my copy of the complete collection. Hurrah! <laughs> Do you also sleep with a coffee pot? No. I, he I does wish now. I, did. I wish I did. Well, no. Oh, no, I don't have. <laughs> yes. We're selling coffee pots on the way out of the studio if uh, you guys want to pick up your own. Uh... <laughs> I wish I still had one of my old Edward toys. I would sleep with that, but no, I don't. Jeez, <laughs> I feel horrible now. My uh, really serious books sit up with uh, my Animorph collection. I set the bar real low. <laughs> I I sleep with my pillow pet, Thomas, that I got for Christmas a couple years ago. <laughs> I have just a bunch of stuffed animals in my bed that are just there. <laughs> I keep my laptop on my bed, too, so I sleep with that as well. Mm, sounds like a good cuddle buddy. TMI, dude. TMI. I'm lying down in my bed right now. Yeah, I think I think we're going off track yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> TMI. We'll fix it in post. Well, do not go. Yeah, it's do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Yeah, it's nine twenty where I am. <laughs> Good luck, Joel. Good luck. Yeah. I need a uh, I I'm thinking. I'm wondering. Maybe we should just cut off recording right now. Well, well, well hold on. We got one more. Here. We got we one got more topic now. here, and this one is very in and out. This is the last one. And it is personal score. How would you rate, after everything you just said about this, the adventure begins, how would you rate it? DM man. I'll, I'll leave this to Diesel. Eat your heart out, bronies. <laughs> oh, shots fired. No hey, offense to any bronies involved. I am also a brony, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's my score. That's my score. It does, it's not numerical. It's like, the, it's like the Drew Carey show with the improv. You're the voice of D. Whose line is, is it anyway? <laughs> yes, you thank just you. realized. Points anyway? don't matter. I, 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 I remember DM and being part of it, and I, I, I just recently listened to the the the, the uh, the no the 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 the, the Christmas speech from the other the railway. railway. Well, Joel, from, this is the point where your avatar becomes uh, a slowpoke. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, Breaking uh, news. Oh I'm slow. I know, I am, I will admit it, I am slow. And, and I thought I was sense. Captain Oblivious. <laughs> Alright, anyway. So you're, anyway, DM man. Yeah, that's my score. <laughs> Alright, Evan, what's your score? I actually have two. The first one is sort of a serious one. I, I rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being Misty Island and 10 being the books. And for a little clarity, personally, I consider... The original series, series 1 through 4, about an 8.5. So on this 1 to 10 scale, I give this a solid 7 out of 10. It's a very enjoyable film. I recommend it for any Thomas fan, new or old, even if you've grown out of it. You can tolerate this with your kids, man. This is a wonderful, wonderful special. And my own personal score is a shut up and take my money out of 10. This... <laughs> This, The Adventure Begins, <laughs> is our Pokemon Origins. This is our adventure in space and time. We've waited a long time for this. And man, it feels good. Yeah. The winner's walk. Yeah. <laughs> Pokemon <laughs> Origins is a good comparison. Yep. I had uh, some similarities okay. there. Oh, yeah. Up next, Metamorphical. What, would, what is your personal score? 9 out of 10. Uh, because... Only because of the the my issues with uh, with some of the singing, I'm done with the singing. But 
Uh, this is better than anything else out there, in my opinion. So it also stands in a league of its own. I I tend to grade the uh, the different series on a different scale, where I consider 17 and 18 to be their own thing, Dark Ages are their own thing, and then the models are their own Model era is their own thing. The specials are their own thing. This is definitely the best of the specials. And I think The Adventure Begins is its own thing. And until we get a sequel, it will stay as its own thing. And a sequel be, will be graded against it. Bottom line is, share this with your kids. And every kid you can get a hold of. Um, so that we can introduce new fans to Thomas properly. And that's all I'm going to say. So if you see a kid in the street, kidnap him. <laughs> yes. Just wing a copy of the DVD as hard as you can at his face. <laughs> <laughs> Buy a basket of these and give them away on the street. Wait. Wait, never mind. <laughs> All right. Next up, Henry the Green. What would what what would you score this special? The adventure begins. Uh, I I I can't give a numerical score. That's why I stink at eBay because I can never put a proper value on things. Um, to me, it's it's the old Siskel and Ebert routine. It's two, two thumbs way up. If anybody asks, I say, watch it now. You can thank me later. <laughs> Agreed. All righty. <laughs> Lady T. Pikachu, what would you rate The Adventure Begins? I'll go ahead and give it. try to give it a numerical score with a 9.5 out of 10 because of the, that damn, that damn, uh, whatever that song's called. Damn really vocalist, I guess. Yeah, yeah, really useful engine. I don't know why I forgot, but oh, that vocalist yeah. just gets me. It takes it down a little bit for me. Other uh, than that, the movie's excellent. I love it. Every moment of it, it's perfect. It's what we've been waiting for for years. Alright. Dear Lord Brenner, more, please. Yes. Please make a sequel. Oh, and Mountain yeah. Engines, too. I Our want Mountain Engines. Yes, I want staff. Mountain Engines big yes. time. I want Mountain Engines. Please make Duke that. remake, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hey, who's to say Duke isn't actually the lost treasure? Ooh. Ooh. And neither is Glenn. <laughs> well, but he he's already found. Oh, 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 that could be neat. Hero will take care of that, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. My score. I'm going to put a numerical on this one. Um, I am giving it a 9 out of 10. I give The Adventure Begins a 9 out of 10. I, I but the, like I said... I, I thought the tale of the brave was the one that set the standard. This one went above and beyond that in many, many ways. And that is why I give it this score. Nine out of 10. Beautiful that movie. Is, watch it immediately. Yes, yes. I'll probably watch it again now. <laughs> and now finally, Cyrano, what is your score? It all comes down to you, man. What do you rate? The adventure begins. You know it's not a good idea to put pressure on someone <laughs> with social anxiety and OCD. <laughs> I'm not trying to be... Anyway, we I'm haven't made the best decisions be this it, evening. Don't I don't worry. want to end. <laughs> but, uh, anyway. I, what is it? I don't really use scoring systems for things <laughs> because, <laughs> well... It'll be easier if if any of you are familiar with Total Biscuit on YouTube. Oh, yes. Never heard of it. Okay, but got at least one fan, fellow fan of him there. His thoughts on scoring systems are basically mine. Scoring systems aren't really all that reliable because... I mean, they mean different things to different people, and... Oh my god, subjectivity. Yeah. <laughs> but suffice it to say, if I did have to, it would have a very high rating. This gets the Cerno seal of approval. Four and a half out of five, <laughs> or 9.5 out of ten, whatever. Nine five stars, bro. Yes. I think we I'll give it five that. Woody Allens out of five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or I could just do Oh, I know, or I could just do it like Pro Jared does and say, I give this a coffee pot out of ten. 
There we go. <laughs> there we go. We have a there winner. There we go. <laughs> All right. And thus, that, is, this, is that it for you, Cyrano? Yes, I believe so. And with that, then, we are now done with our review and our somewhat kind of rabbit trail of the of the adventure begins. I'd like to thank everybody here, DM Man, Evan, Metamorphical, Henry the Green, Lady to Pikachu, and Cyrano for doing this with me. You guys, this was fun. I really love this, and I hope we can do it again. Yes. Oh, yeah. I would definitely yes. do this again. I want to do something like this again. Blast. I don't want Glad to, to be here, man. Yeah, we'll, prob- we'll, we'll probably discuss this at another time, and also, I want to thank you, the YouTube viewers, for watching this, even though we may have sucked about over two hours of your life. But hey, this this was fun, and I really hope you enjoyed this, and I really hope that you go out and get The Adventure Begins, because this is worth it. Get it. Like, comment, subscribe, folks. Yes, also, I, please yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Cobalt Fossil. I do right, pony um, videos. Anybody else here who has a YouTube channel? Maybe I can uh, post it down. I do um, MLP mm. analysis. Videos. I have a YouTube channel, but oh. don't use it anymore. I still uh, use mine sometimes. Can I, can I get uh, your names for that? Um, DM man, you don't have one, right? Uh, no, but I'd like to flog a, uh, something. Um, if anyone has an I- iPhone or iPad um, and are into uh, war gaming at all, please check out Musket Smoke. It's free to play, and it's awesome like if you're a war gamer if you're into military history at all you gotta check this out it's just like it's the game i want just like adventure begins was like the the thomas lay thing that oh savior um musket smoke is like that for mobile war gamers it's just the game that we wanted made forever and it exists now and please check it out um that's my plug there we go all righty uh, do you, um, Evan, do you have one? Uh, no, not per se, but I'm also going to give a shout out a little closer to home. Uh, we're doing something special with the Extended Railway series on Soder Island, and uh, please uh, look at the fan site in a few days. Uh, hopefully, by the time this comes out, we'll have started putting up some audiobooks of the very beginning of the uh, Extended Railways series so as a co-originator if you will of that I, i'm very happy and proud to uh, support that all right all right also yeah tales from the other railway uh awesome things have happened and are coming down the pipeline soon and it's going to be awesome all righty met metamorphical do you have anything you just call me meta for short um let visit restorethemagic.org, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, should have another chapter of the um, of our uh, railroad series uh, take off coming up soon, and should have the final chapter of the Station Girl up at the end of the week. Yeah. That's about it. Station Girl, I haven't, oh, I'm, I haven't I'm read that for that. ever. Alrighty, um, Henry. Henry the Green, do you have anything? Uh, uh, I don't have anything to plug. I guess I I will say what I think everybody can agree on. Support the official release. Go buy it. Don't just watch it on YouTube and and say, you know, that's all I'm going to do. If if you want to see more, you got to pay him the money. Yeah. And it's (laughs) it's worth the money. Yes. Lady to Pikachu. I do have a YouTube, user slash Super Pikachu 11. And I, and I voice act for Wild New Wester, sort of the modern years, so please, yes. please listen to my voice. So Super Pikachu what? Uh, use, it's Super Pikachu 11 in the link, but the YouTube All channel right. is the same as my other web handle. Okay. And as for me, yes, there's my channels. Please subscribe as well. But also I want to make a shout out to the Shining Time Station fan site. Please check it out. Because me and... Me and Henry the Green have done a, have done stuff with that. We helped. We did the uh, episodes guide for it. We helped out with that, right? Yes, we did, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. We didn't do, we didn't do everything, but we, but we we did uh, contribute several synopses. Right. And lastly, Cyrano, you said you have a YouTube channel. Yep. Cobalt. And it's Fossil. Cobalt Fossil. Yes, Cobalt, like the metal. Right. Right. It's the name of Cobalt my pony. Yes, it's the name of my... All right. 
It's the name of my pony form. Alright. And I do Alrighty. MLP uh -huh. analysis videos. There aren't very many yet, but now with Audacity, I think I'll get the videos out quicker. Okay. Alright, well, I think that wraps everything up. Again, thank you to everybody on YouTube for watching this, and thanks again to you guys. This was fun, and I hope to do it again. Let's thank all you, say goodbye. Me too. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Hey, see you later. Bye, Bye. Everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye. Peace out, Bye. folks. Love you all. Thanks this again. Is Machine. This is Ski Machine, signing out. Thank you.